Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are gonna be talking all things eating for fertility. I have been requested many times through the years to chat about foods and fertility and how you can eat in a way that boosts your chances of you know, having a healthy pregnancy. And I'm really excited to dive into this topic. If you guys are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Becca. I'm a registered dietitian. I'm a creator of the Mindful Eating Made Simple intuitive eating and nutrition program. And I have been posting four years online, cred credible nutrition information that is easy to understand, easy to apply, but also that is really comes from a balanced approach that doesn't make you crazy. So I can help you be confident with healthy eating without creating a complex. So this topic is definitely a big one. And in today's video, I am going to touch on specific foods that you can eat to boost your fertility or you know improve your chances of conceiving naturally. This is, like I said, a big topic. There is a lot that goes into um, you know, improving chances of conceiving and there's just a lot of different angles. And I am going to speak specifically to the nutrition angles because that is my wheelhouse and what I can speak to. So we're gonna go through some different foods that you can focus on. But before we jump into the specifics, I do just want to make this disclaimer that I hope that you will take this information and apply it to your diet but if you are taking this information and you are making it rigid if you are creating specific rules around eating this way um, and being very absolute about it that can create a lot of stress in your life and one of the biggest factors impeding conception is stress so take this information with a grain of salt apply it to your diet but please still leave room for balance because if this is stressing you out that is not improving your chances of conceiving naturally or conceiving at all. I don't know why I'm saying naturally, just in general, no matter how you are going about conceiving a baby, all of these foods are going to be great to improve egg quality. So first we need to talk about that. So as women, we are born with all of the eggs that we're ever going to have. And as we get older, that um, reserve of eggs does diminish. So we can't change the number of eggs that we have, but we can change the quality of eggs that we have. So for example, if an egg that is let's just say poor quality does get fertilized, it may not go on to um, you know, even implant or become a healthy pregnancy and a healthy baby. But if it's a high quality egg, then we have a much better chance of that going on to become a healthy pregnancy. So we technically have all of our eggs that are just cells in our ovaries. But about three months prior to ovulation, your body will select um, a few of those cells to go to, that are technically called follicles to dramatically grow and increase Increase in size and mature um, and that's what can go on to become you know like conceive a baby so you have this kind of 90 day ish window that you're playing with where you can really impact the health of those upcoming eggs if that makes sense this window where these follicles are developing and maturing rapidly it requires a lot of energy and it requires a lot of nutrients so if we're providing what you know everything that your body needs during that time it's only going to create a you know a higher quality healthier follicle at the end of it the very first tip is to focus on having balanced blood sugar. I've talked about blood sugar so many times on my channel. It's a huge topic in my program. I've done videos about blood sugar. I have a more recent one called Eating for Energy that has a lot to do with blood sugar. It is very important to balance your blood sugar just in general for general health, for you to feel good and to feel satisfied um, and not to be like lethargic and craving food. And it's just, it's good all the time, but especially when it comes to infertility, because lots of um, you know carbohydrate consumption that spikes blood sugar that leads to large insulin spikes. It makes our body a little bit insulin or, or uh, resistant to that insulin. And what happens when we have high levels of insulin? It actually directly impacts um, what, like our hormones. For example, high levels of insulin can actually um, tell our female bodies to release more testosterone. Another example is high insulin levels will actually decrease your level of, it's called sex hormone binding globulin. And when you have lower levels of this, it actually 
causes your body to raise, like dump more estrogen into your system, so higher estrogen levels. And we really want, you know, our hormones are kind of this fine-tuned balance, and if something is way out of whack, like there's way too much estrogen, it really just, it messes with the whole cycle and therefore can impede or decrease your chances of conceiving. So how do you, with food, actually manage your blood sugar better, keep it more balanced? So first things first, if you're going to eat like a carbohydrate-rich food, um, especially like something that's grain based, the more that it is um, like more complex, the better it's going to be for blood sugar because it takes a, lo a lot longer to break down. Complex carbohydrates, for example, um, oats or quinoa um, or beans, they are very high in fiber, which is going to really slow down the, the breakdown really of those carbohydrates, which slows down that sugar getting into your bloodstream. So the more complex they are, the longer they take to break down, the less chance we are spiking blood sugar. Also, when you're eating carbohydrates, um, pairing them with um, protein and fat is also going to do the same thing that fiber does. It's just going to slow down the breakdown of those carbs. And then you have like a more steady rise in blood sugar versus a spike from carbohydrates, just like rapidly, um, being digested. So your oats and your quinoa, these are more complex carbohydrates, but you can also get carbohydrates from fruit as well. Fruit is mostly carbohydrates, but it's also very high in fiber. So nature is kind of packing all of those carbohydrates that are very nutrient dense and not something to avoid. Um, also your body needs carbohydrates by the way but it's packing them with lots of fiber so it's just going to naturally you know keep your blood sugar from spiking and therefore insulin from spiking vegetables um, especially those starchy vegetables like potatoes and squash and corn those are also car carbohydrate rich as well but again they are paired with fiber so you're not going to see these um, big spikes in blood sugar and big spikes in insulin that you would see from you know foods with a lot of like added sugars or um, you know foods that are mainly just like refined flour and not much fiber or anything else paired with it that is where you're going to see those big spikes and big dips so those are things that you want to, I'm not going to say avoid because again, balance, but you do want to be more cognizant. And when you are feeling more energized, when you are feeling um, less crashy, when you are feeling like you're, you're not craving carbs as much, that's a good indicator that your blood sugar is a lot more stable and a lot more happy. So that's my little spiel on complex carbs. But as I said, pairing, um, Food, or pairing, I'm sorry, carbohydrates with a protein and or fat can also really help stabilize your blood sugar. And I wanted to call out some specific foods that are high in fat and high in protein that are um, good things to eat to support or promote fertility. So specifically, um, high quality fats. So I'm talking like olives and olive oil, you know, coconut flakes or coconut oil, um, grass-fed butter, um, nuts, any kind of nuts, avocados, eggs, um, or grass-fed meats. These are all great sources of high quality fats. And then as far as protein, some high quality sources that are protein rich would be again, grass-fed meats, eggs, um, nuts again. So a lot of the high fat, high quality fat are also high quality proteins. Bone broth is another one. Um, whether you're making it yourself or you're buying it, just buying like chicken stock from the store is not the same thing. But um, like a good store-bought brand would be Kettle and Fire if you want to like purchase it versus make it. And it is very high in protein. Um, so that is another thing. If you can add bone broth, whether you're cooking with it or sipping on it, that's another high quality protein source. And then I did want to mention um, dairy here full fat dairy for your high quality fat. Um, and it's also pretty rich in protein, but the research and consensus seems to be a little bit mixed on dairy. For sure, low fat dairy um, is, is not the best. Um, you know, you, we need fats to regulate our hormones. Fat is a good thing. It's not something to be scared of. Um, and especially if it's like high quality fats, but there are, there is some research that shows that dairy, like um, specifically pasteurized dairy, can actually um, like decrease your chances of fertility. I think for what it comes down to is if you're someone that tolerates da dairy very well, it doesn't um, mess with your stomach, it doesn't like mess with your body. I am someone who tolerates dairy very well. Um, in fact, I feel great when I'm eating dairy. So if you are eating high quality, like grass-fed. Um, 
full fat sources of dairy raw would be the best i know that's like a controversial topic um, if you're comfortable with that um, but that can actually be a great fertility promoting food however if you're not someone who tolerates dairy really well and it seems to really like actually like increase your mucus production which can be a side effect um, of dairy or um, if it just messes with you overall and it's like increasing the inflammation in your body then that those would have like you know um, poor effects on your egg health and your fertility so that is kind of a that's a that one's a bit of a toss-up I don't want to say like one way or the other like yay or nay it just kind of from what I gather from the research that I've done, it really is person dependent. So that's a personal choice for you. Second tip is eating foods that are rich in or high in antioxidants. So antioxidants are your, your first line defense against free radicals or oxidative stress in the body. Oxidative stress is like physiological stress on the body. I have also have an entire video on antioxidants in my Nutrition 101 series because it's just a very important topic for overall health. But when we're thinking about fertility, we want to make sure that all of those lovely cells, those egg cells, those follicles in our ovaries are protected. We don't, we don't want them to be vulnerable to high levels of oxidative stress and really oxidative damage what free radicals um, do is they are scavengers looking for electrons they're very unstable and they want to um, grab an, like another one more electron to put on their outer shell so that they can be stabilized now what they do what like what they're actually looking for is electrons from other cells so once you steal an electron from another cell now that cell is unstable it's unhealthy can go on to die or be damaged we don't want that we don't want free radicals going around and hurting all of our cells we especially want to protect those follicles so by eating a lot of antioxidant rich foods which I'll get to that in a second it's going to help protect our body against these free radicals in our entire body this is like universal but again it will include those follicles now there are lots of foods that are high in antioxidants. Some of the big ones are your like dark green leafy vegetables, um, berries of any kind. So it could be strawberries or blueberries or goji berries or cranberries. Any kind of berries are very antioxidant rich. Apples, um, artichokes, asparagus, broccoli, these are all very high um, in antioxidants. And then some of your beans, especially like red bean, like red kidney beans, um, they're also antioxidant rich. So including these real whole foods in your diet, mostly produce, that is a way for you to really um, bring in a lot of those antioxidants and protect all the cells mostly in your body. Tip number three is to get in your omega-3 fats. So omega-3s are an anti-inflammatory fat and they cannot be synthesized in the body, meaning we have to get them from food. And there is actually research, um, and I'll link a study down below, that adequate levels of omega-3s, um, you know, consuming adequate amounts, can actually increase um, the health of embryos. So omega-3s are definitely very important. They're also super important in when you're actually pregnant as well it's for forming you know baby's brain and baby's eyes um, but we're here talking about preconception here and you know outside of a supplement one of the best sources is fish so some of the fish that are low mercury that are also high in omega-3s are um, salmon um, sardines mackerel um, anchovies and herring those are all good sources of omega-3s I think a lot of like most people love salmon the other ones might be a little tougher <laughs> to get down sardines. I don't like sardines, but again, though that is a natural um, food source where you can find these omega-3 fats. Also certain nuts too, especially like walnuts, very, very high in omega-3s. And seeds, um, like chia seeds, again, very high in omega-3. So those are a couple plant sources. Okay, the next tip, um, which is probably gonna be the least well received, and that is actually eating like the whole animal, especially organ meats. So, in our modern lives, we've pretty much completely gotten rid of, at least here in the US, um, I think it's definitely different in, like at least I know when I've been in Europe, um, organs were more so like mixed into, like marrow and liver were definitely more so mixed into the cuisine than they are here. Um, they are not really consumed um, much at all here in the US. In fact, they're so cheap to buy because nobody wants them, but they are actually the most nutrient dense part of the animal. So just to kind of explain how what I mean by that or how this works, um, for example, eating something like beef liver or chicken liver, um, animals and humans 
humans are the same in that they use their, I mean, their liver does a lot of things, but one of the functions of the liver is to be the like reservoir of all of our nutrient stores. So basically, anything except for calcium that's all in the bones but um, anything that we're storing and we're holding a, like reserve of for example iron um, it's stored in our liver so if we eat an animal's liver we are eating all of their nutrient stores right we're eating all of these like additional vitamins and minerals that they were just you know, keeping in their liver for when they needed them. So the nutrient levels are just like off the charts. Um, another thing to consider is in our, you know, traditionally our ancestors, they ate the entire animal, right? There was just, there were no supermarkets with chicken breasts and ground beef wrapped in plastic. They hunted and they, you know, ate and used up every single bit of that animal. Um, so organ meats were, and really the whole animal was very much a part of the diet. So eating these super nutrient dense parts of the animal, um, they were never discarded, they were consumed. And um, especially, you know, like pregnant women or women who were in their childbearing years would really especially eat these foods because they knew, um, they just kind of had the wisdom that they were very supportive of fertility. You can also supplement, which is a lot easier than eating, for example, beef liver. Um, and I, if you want to see an entire video on supplementation for fertility, that's kind of a whole separate topic. Um, I'm specifically focusing on just food. Comment down below. I could do a part two. Let me know if that's what, let me know if that's something you guys want to see. Cause I do also have like a lot to say there, but I'm trying to keep this video a little more concise. Um, but so things like vitamin C and vitamin D and iron, vitamin E, um, zinc, folate, CoQ10, that's another big one for fertility. These are all nutrients that you're going to find in these organ meats. They're going to be very concentrated. So eating these um, is a great way to support fertility. If you are interested in trying them, can get them down um, or you can supplement. Okay, and then the final tip um, isn't necessarily food related, but it is beverage related, which you know it goes into your diet, makes up your diet, um, and that is caffeine. And I also want to touch a bit on alcohol. So caffeine, like high intakes of caffeine, like over 400 milligrams a day, which is like four or more cups of coffee, um, that has actually been. Um, uh, correlated with with miscarriage and I'll link a study down below that looked at many 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 women across many 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 pregnancies it's a it's a huge study um, it's pretty um, it's pretty uh, like not alarming but definitely something to consider if you are high like high caffeine intake um, that is definitely something that you want to start to scale back on do you need to totally give up caffeine I don't think so based on what I've seen. I think one to two cups a day um, doesn't seem to have, that amount of caffeine doesn't seem to have those effects. Um, but there's definitely this correlation here between like high caffeine intake and not so healthy pregnancies or possibly even like preventing conception. It can be one of the factors. Also, if you are putting lots of sugar in your coffee, it's very sweet especially if you're drinking on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. Again, we're rising those blood sugar levels, which is rising the insulin. So coffee is definitely an area to look at. Um, if this is something that you, you know, if you are a coffee consumption, con coffee consumer, um, and especially if you drink a lot, coffee does have, it actually is high in antioxidants. So I personally, I don't avoid coffee. I like coffee. I don't drink, I drink hardly any caffeine because I just don't handle it well. Um, it really messes with me and I don't feel very good when I drink a lot of caffeine. Um, but everyone's tolerance is different. It's just, again, something to look at, something to consider. If you're drinking lots and lots of coffee and lots of caffeine, with, especially with sugar, I would definitely remedy that if you are having a hard time conceiving. Um, but also it's just the healthier your eggs are, even if you are able to conceive, the healthier your baby is going to be. So this is something just to consider, I think, regardless. Okay, and then I did wanna to touch on alcohol. Um, there, I mean, I think everyone can agree that heavy drinking, large amounts of alcohol is just, it's, um, not great for the entire body. I mean, it is a neurotoxin. It's very stressful um, on your liver to process all of that alcohol. Um, so heavy drinking, not a great idea ever, but it's, you know, also especially if you are trying to improve your fertility, boost your fertility. Um, the consensus on like moderate drinking, there just doesn't seem to be one. It seems to be very mixed. Um, so again, I think this is very much a personal choice. If you are um, someone who enjoys like a glass of wine here and there from everything 
everything that I've seen, um, especially if it's red wine that has resveratrol, which is an antioxidant, um, that you know doesn't seem to have any um, poor or ill effects on fertility. Um, but again, this is very much a personal choice. Does alcohol, not having alcohol a little bit here and there stress you out in social situations? Do you want to be able to have a drink? Um, that's something to consider because stress is a big factor. Um, a lot of times people are so stressed out when they are trying to conceive and you know a glass of wine here or there to just kind of relax them. Again, not relying on alcohol for that. This is a touchy subject, but again, this is a very personal decision. Moderate drinking does not seem to have ill effects on fertility, but certainly heavy drinking could. Now to wrap up here, coffee and alcohol, if you are drinking them, one thing you absolutely should be doing is hydrating even more. So hydration is important for your entire body, which includes, you know, fertility and your um, endocrine system, your ovaries, your eggs, all of it. Important and very important to hydrate. But if you're drinking caffeine, which will dehydrate you, or you're drinking alcohol, which also dehydrates you, you need to be drinking extra water. So just something to consider on top of that if you're gonna be enjoying some coffee or some wine or whatever else. Woo, okay. That's all I have for this video. That is my rundown. Those are all of the areas, all of the foods that I would consider adding in um, if you are trying to boost fertility. If you are watching this video because you are currently trying to conceive, I am praying for you. I hope that that sweet little baby comes to you very soon because being a mom truly is one of the biggest blessings. And also eating well, preconceptionally, to increase your chances of conceiving, but also the healthier the egg, that is a blessing that you're passing on to your children. Because the healthier the egg, there's a lot of research that shows actually impacts the health of not just that pregnancy, but then that child lifelong. It's very interesting. So um, thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. If you wanna see a part two where I discuss specific supplementation to boost fertility, definitely let me know down in the comments below because I would be happy to do that as well. I have a lot to say there. Um, but that's all I have for this one. Subscribe if you haven't already. Join my little community here on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram, all the things. I'm just at Becca Bristow, but that's all I have. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.